you're on the hunt for a family hatchback then the Peugeot 308 needs to be on your list. This talented all-rounder is more than a match for the go-to choices of Ford Focus, Vauxhall Astra and Volkswagen Golf. This is the second generation 308 after Peugeot ditched its strategy of increasing the third number of its model names by one when the model was replaced. From now on, each new Peugeot will end with 08. There's no particular big reason why you should buy this Peugeot, rather host of smaller reasons that add up to a compelling case for the 308 as your next new car. As any family knows you need great practicality, low running costs and a real value for money price tag. The 308 is claimed to have the biggest boot in its class, and it can stow significantly more luggage than its rivals. Mild Peugeot 308 refresh for 2017 Compare the pre- and post-facelift versions of the 308 and you'll be hard-pressed to tell the difference, reflecting the general success of the car's original design. Pour over it in more detail and you'll spot that the grille's more upright and it's flanked by tweaked headlights that have led daytime running lights on all models. There are larger grills in the lower bumper to improve engine cooling too. Inside, the multimedia touch screen has been tweaked to make it more responsive, while the onboard technology has been upgraded. Notably the adaptive cruise control now has a braking function. Low running costs Running costs are kept low thanks to frugal and low emission diesel and petrol engines, with the 1.2 litre petrol and 1.6 litre diesel particularly kind to wallets. That range of updates in 2017 also brought a much more refined 1.5-litre Blue Eddy 130 diesel and an 8-speed automatic gearbox fitted to the 2.0-litre Blue Eddy 180 diesel, both of which aimed at lowering costs. The range includes five trim levels, Active, Allure, GT Align, replacing the earlier Feline, GT and GT. The entry-level spec comes with lots of tech including sat-nav, parking sensors and air conditioning. Peugeot 308 is impressive the French manufacturer is back in business when it comes to hot hatches, not only is the smaller 208 to well regarded steer, the larger 308 impresses too. It was given a tweak in 2017, receiving a new bonnet, grille and headlights, but the mechanicals remain unchanged. Which is no bad thing. It comes with a punchy 272 horsepower engine. The 250 horsepower version initially sold alongside it was dropped in 2017, as well as better brakes and a mechanical limited slip differential to help meter out that power hike. Externally the 308 de benefits from subtle styling cues rather than an outlandish body cut and a touring car spec spoiler, so you can enjoy all that performance with a grown-up image. Ditech gadgets the 308 also features a minimalist interior with very few buttons. Instead, the central 9.7-inch touchscreen accesses all the car's major functions such as climate control, sat-nav and audio, leaving a much cleaner and uncluttered central dash. Updates in 2017 brought standard smartphone connectivity with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and MirrorLink, as well as improvements in its responsiveness. The verdict it's fair to say previous Peugeot medium-sized hatchbacks have been quite forgettable, but with this 308 the French manufacturer is back on winning form. The 308 is stylish and has very competitive running costs making it one of the leading medium family hatchbacks you can buy. It won't appeal to all, but we also think the 308 is one of the best of the hot hatchbacks on the market, its grippy front differential and under the radar styling giving it stealth fighter appeal. Read on for the full Peugeot 308 hatchback review, wide range of petrol and diesel engines to choose from no hybrid or electric versions with improved efficiency hot D270 version provides plenty of thrills there's a huge amount of choice here, providing you don't want a hybrid or electric car, with 4 petrol and 5 diesel engines, ranging from 110 horsepower to 272 horsepower. Mainstream petrol engines There are two power options in the mainstream range and both of them are centered around Peugeot's fabulous 1.2-litre, three-cylinder Pudek motor. It's one of our favorite triples on the market thanks to impressive refinement and a slightly larger displacement. Many three-cylinder units are 1.0-litre, which makes it more responsive at low revs. The entry-level Pudek 110 version has 110 horsepower, 205 newton meters of torque and a manual gearbox resulting in 11.1 seconds 0 to 62 miles per hour and a top speed of 117 miles per hour it works well in the 208 but feels a bit stretched in the larger 308 although offers almost diesel like running costs for low mileage motorists better is the Pudek 130 version 
with 131 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque for a 9.1 second 0 to 62 miles per hour time. You can also select an automatic gearbox although this is about half a second slower over the benchmark sprint. Both top out at around 125 miles per hour. There's more performance with the 1.6 liter THP 205 petrol with 205 horsepower and a manual gearbox. With 285 newton meters of torque on tap, it hits 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.5 seconds and tops out at 146 miles per hour. It feels as fast as these figures suggest, responding quickly and smoothly, yet quiet enough when driving normally. Wide range of frugal diesel engines there's more choice here largely because in 2017 Peugeot introduced a 1.5 litre Blue Eddy 130 engine that will eventually replace the 1.6 litre motor, but for now they're on sale alongside each other. The only performance figure available so far is torque minus 300 newton meters, which is exactly the same as the marginally larger version. We can tell you that it feels very flexible and makes a lot less noise than the older engine, and should prove very popular indeed. Bottom of this range is the 1.6 litre 99 horsepower Blue Eddy 100, which packs 254 newton meters of torque and accelerates the slowest of all options here taking 11.3 seconds to get from 0 to 62 miles per hour and maxing out at 116 miles per hour the puncher 1.6 liter blue eddy 120 with 120 horsepower seems a better bet with a burly of 300 newton meters of torque and faster 0 to 62 miles per hour time 9.7 seconds for the manual and 9.5 for the auto with the 122 miles per hour top speed for both there's a choice of blue eddy 150 150 horsepower, or Blue Eddy 180, 181 horsepower, from the top 2.0 liter engine, with torque swelling to 370 newton meters and 400 newton meters, respectively. The lower powered output can be had with a manual or automatic gearbox, while the 180 version is auto only. Although the manual Blue Eddy 150's 132 miles per hour top speed is 1 mile per hour higher than the automatic. The latter is quicker from 0 to 62 miles per hour at 8.6 seconds to the manual's 8.9 seconds. The automatic only Blue Eddy 180 is only marginally quicker again with a 137 miles per hour top speed and an 8.4 second 0 to 62 miles per hour time. Sporty 308 to 270 by Peugeot Sport topping the range is the 272 horsepower to 270 by Peugeot Sport which uses a more powerful version of the same 1.6-litre THP engine found in the THP 205. Peak torque of 330 newton meters is available from 1,900 revolutions per minute, allowing this 308 to sprint from 0 to 62 miles per hour in just 6.0 seconds, progressing on to a top speed of 155 miles per hour. The GDIS throttle response can be sharpened further by pressing the sport button near the gear lever. GT versions have this feature as well although the effect is less noticeable. Peugeot 308 gearbox is no surprise to find that the 308 is available with both manual and automatic gearboxes. The lowest powered petrol and diesel engines get a 5-speed manual, while the rest of the range gains an extra cog. It's an easy thing to use but doesn't set any benchmarks in terms of precision or enjoyment. The shift action is a bit notchy and the lever's movement into each gear can feel a bit vague, but it certainly does the job. A 6-speed automatic gearbox is available on middling power engines and again, it changes gears adequately but isn't especially dynamic. An 8-speeder, introduced in 2017, is much better, but only available on the top-powered diesel. Discontinued Peugeot 308 engines The 1.6-litre THP petrol engine was previously sold in 125 horsepower and 155 horsepower guises. The more powerful petrol is nippy around town easily able to cruise on motorways and keeps up with the faster moving traffic without difficulty. On more twisty back roads we needed to change gear more frequently to keep the engine in its torque wheel power band, though. A 1.6 litre e diesel with 115 horsepower was also sold, this doesn't offer a huge amount of punch slowdown in the rev range, but builds quickly to provide good overtaking ability and high speed cruising. Peugeot also initially offered the 308 D with 250 horsepower but this version was dropped in order to focus on the more successful 272 horsepower car from 2017. 
comfortable yet assured handling composed with sharp steering tis very rewarding to drive another area of significant improvement compared to the previous generation is how the 308 handles. Helping here is a 140 kg weight reduction, roughly the equivalent of two passengers, and the car is significantly more agile as a result. This agility is accentuated by the small steering wheel which requires less turning action to get the car to change direction. The suspension is also impressive, providing a compliant ride and smoothing out bumpy surfaces without a lot of roll when cornering. It certainly is a noticeable improvement over the previous generation 308, though if you prefer a car that is sharper to drive and don't mind a harder ride there are other cars that can deliver that. What also impressed was hard braking while turning into a corner, which did not upset the car and we always felt very much in control. Impressively agile 308 to for the ultimate in Peugeot 308 handling prowess you'll want the full fat to 270 by Peugeot Sport. This car features more substantial brakes and a mechanical differential, which helps get as much of that power down on the asphalt as possible. It's this that comes to define the way the 308 handles, you pitch the front end into a corner using the fast, reactive steering and the tires grip hard, allowing the car to hold its line with confidence. The feeling through the wheel isn't entirely natural as the diff tends to tug both your hands and the nose of the car left and right under power, but these aggressive mechanical sensations are all part of the experience. Small wheel and high set dials won't appeal to all clutter-free cabin thanks to touch screen functionality whether you like it or not, it's at least a different approach to things strike you immediately when you nestle into the 308 driver's seat, the small steering wheel and minimalist dash layout. It feels strange at first but we find it not only refreshingly different but it helps you to enjoy the driving experience all the more for the direct steering. The touch screen is easy to use if a little slow to respond on earlier cars, and while we never struggled to find the function, aircon, satnav, audio, we were after, having some physical buttons and knobs would make it easier. Similarly, the unusual driving position won't suit everyone, some people find it off-putting looking over the wheel to see the speedo and anti-clockwise sweeping rev counter. Updates in 2017 brought a more responsive screen, which helps to cut down the number of frustrating jabs and missed button pushes. We hope the facelifted 308 might have adopted the 3008's, slightly, increased number of physical switches but the majority of the controls remain virtual. Uplifted to cabin the main addition for the sportiest 308 is yards of red stitching, it's on the seats, the door cards, the gear shift gator and the floor mats. It's even stitched into the rubber on the dashboard. Switching to sport mode makes the instrument panel and dash elements go red and also unlocks the facility to show power, turbocharger boost and torque output in real time. There's a g-force meter too, so you can see how much grip the car is generating while cornering quickly. Good balance of comfort and handling pliant suspension soaks up ruts and bumps firmer edge to dip but still comfy we were impressed by the Peugeot 308 in terms of comfort, whether stuck in a traffic jam or tackling an on-stop 3 hour drive to the airport. Front seats come with manual adjustment. There is the option of electrically powered control, and the steering wheel is adjustable for both rake and reach, so that enabled us to find a comfortable position easily. The unusually small diameter steering wheel and position does feel odd at first, but you quickly get used to it and the direct feel and quick response is very enjoyable. The centrally mounted screen in the dash is also angled towards the driver making it even easier to read. Also because the touch screen controls the car's central functions there are very few buttons visible, so no clutter to tie the eyes as you search for the control you are after. Peugeot has also provided a great compromise between ride comfort and handling. Over off, city roads the suspension does a good job of absorbing the dips and bumps, and only the very large potholes deliver a hard knock to the car. Out on twisty roads enthusiastic cornering has the car turning with alacrity and holding a steady line through a bend, even at speed. Firm activation a few differences to note in terms of comfort here. The GTA features lowered suspension and bigger wheels than the mainstream 308, but it still rides well, leaning more towards cornering performance than outright comfort. Whether you pick petrol or diesel power, a synthesized engine noise is played through the speakers in the car when you press the sport button. It's quite loud and sounds odd in the diesel version. The 308 follows Peugeot's usual trim level hierarchy with six distinct trim levels. Standard Peugeot 308 hatchback equipment access entry level specification comes with, 
LED day running lights and tail lamps 15 inch steel wheels air conditioning electric front windows remote control central locking cruise control with speed limiter dub radio Bluetooth and USB connectivity Peugeot 308 active next rung up the 308 ladder adds 16 inch quartz alloy wheels dual zone climate control rear parking sensors visibility pack with automatic lights and wipers and an auto dimming rear view mirror nappa leather covering for the steering wheel and knob 9.7 inch multimedia touch screen with sat nav driver's seat lumbar adjustment Peugeot 308 allure range allure ramps up the kit roster even further with 17 inch rebuys alloy wheels 16 inches on the 1.6 blue eddy 120 full led headlamps with front fog lamps parking sensors front and rear electrically folding door mirrors electronic parking brake Peugeot 308 GT line first of the sporty themed 308 sads 18 inch diamond alloy wheels twin exhaust pipe stark and rear privacy glass scrolling front indicators led front fog lamps a reversing camera red stitching for the interior Peugeot 308 GT more power and equipment here Larger air intakes in the front bumper lowered ride height, 7mm at the front, 10mm at the rear driver sport pack keyless entry and start driver assistance pack with adaptive cruise control, autonomous emergency braking to by Peugeot Sport the flagship of the 308 range adds to the GT's specification with, a GT specific body kit with red accents ride height lowered by 11mm all round 19 inch carbon alloy wheels torsen and limited slip differential cruise control GT specific bucket seats aluminium look pedals and door sills optional Peugeot 308 hatchback extras there's the usual mix here of metallic paint and different alloy wheel sizes and designs to choose from. Also depending on which trim you choose there is the option to select certain extras such as a panoramic sunroof, reversing camera and parking sensors. Full 5-star Euro and cap crash test rating lots of passive and active safety systems autonomous safety kit and driver assistance pack buyers should be reassured about Peugeot 308 safety levels thanks to an extensive range of both passive and active systems which helped the car to achieve a full 5-star rating during its round of tests with Euro and cap. There is the usual comprehensive range of airbags including driver. Passenger and side ones plus systems designed to help avoid an accident in the first place such as anti-lock brakes. System to maximize braking effort and effectiveness and electronic stability control to help prevent the car going into a skid. From 2017 Peugeot made its Glory Effect rear lights standard equipment, which are always on like the daytime running lights at the front, adding style and making you more visible too. A driver assistance pack is also offered with adaptive cruise control, emergency collision alert and braking system, blind spot monitoring, traffic sign recognition and a 180 degree reversing camera. The adaptive cruise control function also gained a braking feature as part of the 2017 overhaul. The blind spot monitoring is effective warning when a car is alongside but even if it isn't visible in your wing mirror. The collision alert and braking system work together to detect whether a vehicle in front is too close and in the first instance provides an audible and visual warning, that's the alert bit, to the driver to start to brake. If there is no braking or not enough and a collision is imminent then the system applies the brakes automatically. For a hatchback it boasts a big boot rear passenger room is adequate lots of storage space in the cabin practicality is one area where the Peugeot 308 really impresses, with a big boot and plenty of interior storage, including a cooled glove box and large door bins that can take a 1.5 litre water bottle. The central console has a sliding cover to reveal a cup holder that can be swiveled out of the way so you can stash wallets and phones. It sounds okay in theory, but in reality it's poorly sighted and awkward to get at. Plus there is a USB and own connection with a small shelf directly under the centrally mounted touch screen that's ideal for iPods and MP3 players. The rear seats also feature very clear isofix attachment points so it should be straightforward to fit two compatible child seats in the back. There's nothing unusual to note about the 308's dimensions, it slots comfortably into the family hatchback market alongside similarly sized rivals like the Ford Focus and Vauxhall Astra. The large boot measures 470 litres, significantly larger than the Ford Focus and the VW Golf. Plus, the 6040 spilled rear seats can be folded by pressing a button to boost luggage space to just over 1,300 litres.